All right, y'all, now I get to answer some of your questions that you sent in, which is one of my favorite parts of the show. All right, we'll see here. We've got, is it even possible to start your own business with littles and plans to have more kiddos? Yes, it is possible. But here's what you need to do when it comes to anything with little kids. You need to set realistic expectations. Set realistic expectations of how much time you're gonna have, how much energy you're gonna have, how much you're gonna want to do, and oh, by the way, be willing to reset and reset and reset those expectations when life actually happens. Because if you already have kids, you know. Kids are unpredictable. Kids can derail your plans faster than about anybody. So you need to be ready to adapt. You need to be willing to give yourself grace and reset your plans and expectations when and if things go different than you think they will, which they always do, especially when it comes to kids. One of the things that I would encourage you if, when it comes to starting a business with little kids is to work around their schedule. So set yourself up for success knowing when they sleep, when they nap, when they wake up. For example, my third child, my daughter, Mary Grace, she sleeps so late. Y'all, it is such a huge blessing. We did not experience that with my first two boys, but this girl will sleep until 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock. So there's a lot of time in the morning, and especially on Saturday mornings, where I can work on something. I can clean. I can play with the boys. I could do something. What does that look like for you? If you have kids that sleep late, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, you could use that time. You could set your alarm early and work while they sleep, work on that business. You could also do it during nap time, or you could do it during the evening. I would just encourage you to plan your time working on your business around your kids' schedule. If they're in preschool, you can work when they're in preschool. And of course, if you want to have help, you can look into that option as well in order to focus on your business. Just be realistic about what you're expecting of yourself and your business, and by the way, your kids before you go down that route. But yes, you can definitely do it. All right, let's answer another one here. Let's see, we've got how to juggle my current job while building up a side gig to become my main job. I love this question and I get it a lot. Here's what you need to know. Speaking of realistic expectations, if you want the side thing to become the main thing, you need to know that for a season, it's going to feel like you're working two full-time jobs, because you are. Because you want the side thing to be the main thing. So in order for you to build it up enough financially and from a time standpoint on the side to support you, where when you leave the main job, it doesn't feel like this terrifying leap, it's the next logical step, it can support you financially, you've gotta build it up to almost the same level. It doesn't have to be the exact same level, but it needs to be close. You don't need to be making $75,000 in your full-time job and you get your side business to 10,000 and you think that's time to make the step. It's not a step, that's a leap. And it's a scary fall whenever you fall short. So what I want you to do is build the side business up enough where that amount of money that you are bringing home from the side business can support you. Now, if you're making 75,000 in your full-time job, for example, you don't have to build this up to 75,000. Let's say you can build it up to 50 or 60. If you can live on that, you're ready to make that step. But for a season, as you're building this up and up and up and you're working nights and you're working weekends and you're waking up early and you're staying up late, it's gonna feel like you're working two full-time jobs because you are. But just remember what your goal is. Your goal is to work on this side thing full-time. And in order to do that in this season, we're gonna work two full-time jobs, we're gonna get that side business where it needs to be financially, where it can support you, and when you get there, guess what? You're gonna have a huge increase in time and peace of mind and rest because you're gonna be able to quit that full-time job and you're gonna be able to work on the business full-time just like you wanted and you are now only working one full-time job and it's your dream job, it's your business, and it was all worth it. Just know in that season, it's gonna be exhausting, but it's just a season. I hope that encourages you and I hope it helps you get through this tough season as you're doing that. All right, let's do one more. How do I get my wife to have more confidence in herself and her business? I love this question. First of all, the fact that you're asking shows me how much you care about your wife. So well done. That is really cool, really impressive, really admirable that you love her and you want her to believe in herself like you believe in her. And for her to see in herself what you see in her, 
What a good husband for writing that in. So thank you for that. The second thing I would say is you can't. I know it was like good news and the bad news. Like, oh, good job. You can't. Um, you can't get her to have confidence. You can't make her feel something, make her do something, because you know she's her own person, just like you have experienced probably in other aspects of your marriage. You can't make someone feel something. You can't make someone care. You can't make someone do anything. Here's what you can do. You can encourage things that build confidence. So for example, let's say that there's something that she wants to do, but she's a little bit scared. You can encourage her, coach her, love her, support her, help her think it through, help her process it in order to do that thing because when she does things that she's afraid of, guess what happens? It builds confidence. So let's say, I'm just gonna make up a scenario to to carry this out for an example for you. Let's say that she wants to do a Facebook Live. I'm making that up. Or she wants to sign up for a, a, a class at a community college. Or she wants to join a book club. Fill in the blank with whatever the thing is. She wants to do it, but she's scared of it. You can encourage her to do that. You can say, what's the, you know, what, what would it be like? Oh, what if we meet people ahead of time? What if we, what if I go with you? What if um, you do a Facebook Live and you set it to private and no one actually sees it? Or what, you could just help encourage her, put all the safety nets, all the encouragement, all the support, I'll go with you. We could try it on a low risk level to help her do that thing that she wants to do that she's afraid of. Because when she does things that she wants to do that she's afraid of and she faces her fear, it builds confidence. And then it's like, oh, wow, you did it. You did awesome. Well, let's do it again and not take off the privacy setting on Facebook. Or, oh, you've already met all those people at book club, so now let's just show up to the first book club. Or, oh, you've already talked to the instructor of the class. Why don't we just go ahead and register? Like, it's just the next logical step. And you just encourage her to take these steps of faith, take these steps into her fear. And as she does that, through practice, through reps, she will build confidence. So you can't make her have confidence, but you can encourage her in the direction of actions that builds confidence. I tell people all the time, the antidote to fear is action. Nothing will silence your fear of doing the thing, like doing the things to go do the things so you can encourage her to do those things that build that confidence that you hope for her. But well done. Great question, and what a supportive spouse to even ask it. Thanks for writing in.